Podcast One presents the Steve Austin Show Classics. <laughs> Here we go. I got Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh, what, what, what were you into? I mean, I, I hung around with the drinking crowd, and, and that, that was my thing. And I never won Dad of the Year uh, at all. And I'm still trying to build a relationship with, with my girls to this day. Yeah. And a period of time where I was always gone, and when I was home, I was gone as well. Yeah, and I was yeah, back sir. on the road. So, yes, uh, but I, but I was into the to the, to the drinking thing, and uh, to to not go into specifics. I've heard Roddy, you know, word on the street when when uh, anybody talked about living life, partying, yeah. you were the guy. Yeah. No one could out party. Yeah, Roddy Roddy Piper, and yeah. so w- when did that turn into a monster and get out of control? Ooh. I mean, I mean, you were functional. But yeah. I look back at some of the decisions I made, and I was pretty hot-headed back then. And you know, and I was always a business guy, and I was always there early, yeah. and I stayed late. But it's a different animal to deal with. Yeah, and yeah. Now I can see that. Now, yeah, I didn't see it then. I was so far in the forest, I couldn't yeah. see the trees. It's yeah, big time. Uh, you know, and then here's uh, another instance of why you even got deeper. Uh, so the first. Uh, before it wasn't WrestleMania, it was a war to settle the score that started everything. And uh, all of a sudden, they want me to take a dive for Hulk in the war to settle the score. Now, he's the champion, and all of a sudden, they got a heel that in five weeks, six weeks, is hotter than any heel they've had. Right. So, but New York, under the uh, thinking of the business, the big guy, babyface territory. They wanted me to, and I said, I'm sorry, I can't. Well, why? Because it's wrong business. If uh, I'm coming back in a tag. Right. Like, da-da-da. Okay, so you want to squeeze your bees out and then do the tag, and then we run. That's different. They don't. So I'm sorry, I, I got kids. I got ice cream bars, too. Right. Then it came to WrestleMania 1, and I... Boy, this is a good place to do this one because you got me, man. Uh, when I was talking to Steve, you folks, uh, you know, he, I was honored that he asked me his podcast. And so I'm talking to him, and the last thing he says to me, so uh, is there really heat with you and Mr. T? It changed the whole conversation. And I thought you were shooting with me. I thought he was going to be here. And I was ready to go. No, I just heard so many heat stories. I mean, did, I, I heard you had a legitimate heat. I, I know oh, the yeah. story about when you walked in the meeting, you came in late. There was a chair with your name tag on it, and there yeah. was T. Yeah. And, you know, he, he flexed his arm and said, feel that. You grabbed his head. <laughs> he said, how's it feel? And he said, soft. Exactly. And you didn't know that you weren't supposed to touch Mr. T. I didn't know. No, no, but, no. So did he come in with all these writers and this, this contract? Is, all of a sudden, you ain't supposed to touch the guy? Yeah. This is what he did. Into this business? I mean, and yeah. back then and not get touched? This, you see, in giving him... That, that rubbed crap. you the wrong way oh, from the get-go. Here's, here's the thing. is What wasn't understood was the entire wrestling profession was on my shoulders to a certain extent as far as all the, all the guys, hey, man, don't make a fool of us. Right. Now, Mr. T wants to come in. Now, he's... Probably the world's biggest TV celebrity at that time, given right. that. And he won some kind of like a bouncer contest. But he came in with, you know, pity the fool, I'm T with that all. Yeah. And he wanted to come in and slam our heads and make fun of us and go, ha, 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 you got the wrong guy. Yeah, he's going to skate off to the next TV That's gig. It. You're trying to put asses in a seat yeah. in an arena. He had zero we respect. got a problem. Zero respect. Right. And... uh I'm on the stage in uh, Rockefeller Center, and he blindsides me and leg dies me off the stage. And I come up, and uh, McMahon said, I saw those eyes, he said, of yours. Thank you for being a pro. Uh, you're not welcome. Right. You know, right. and it's like, you, you have T. And here's the heat getter. is He's oblivious to how ignorant he is. Yeah. Peter Principal, in the height of his own ignorance. And I uh, I said, no, man, I'm not putting him over, which started my reputation. But that was WrestleMania 1, right? One. Okay. Now, now that match, <coughs> I, I watched it just the other night. It wasn't the most fluid match I've seen for obvious reasons because of that dynamic. 
Uh, there's some obviously hellacious talent in the match itself. Yeah. When you take him out of the equation, of course, some of the trademark bumps that Bob Orton took in there. I mean, just that, that guy's incredible. Oh, he's Orton great. Orndorff and buddies from way back. Yeah, you. he's great. Uh, Hogan obviously knows how to work at worker crowd and, and do yeah. what he does. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there was a moment in there uh, you had him in a front face lock. Yeah, I, I told a little communication problem. A little He's bit. not uh, understanding what's going on. Yes, sir. Uh, how and tight was that front face? I was, I, I, it was hooked. Yeah. And the thing is, he was running out of breath. Right. And so, uh, when I, I came to to Vince at a meeting in his office, and I'm late. I'm on the phone. Don't. Keep, I heard that he wrestled amateur. Keep it amateur. Don't let him throw a punch. Right, right, right. And if you watch it, there's nothing. It yeah, I've heard amateur. you tell that story. You and, wonder, yeah. Front face locked them and let them get out of breath a little bit. At the same time, it's the timing thing. Yeah. You know, it's business right, right, and right. Rome and, you know. And now Vince's house. He, Vince put his house up. Yeah. Here's something that I've never uh, uh, circled around much here is, hey, there was a spo- responsibility on my shoulders that everybody else who was uh, Orndorff, Orton, Hogan, they were all, they're all great. But I got a guy that's putting his house up. That means something to me. Right. I got to make this work. Right. And I, sometimes I don't think Vince realizes how what we had to do to make that work. Right. It was really difficult. Right. And uh, uh, but uh, you know, grace of God, we're coming up on WrestleMania 30. Yeah, we're coming. We're coming up on 30. I want to talk to you about Oof. 30. But but let, let's quickly go to two. You okay. and T in a boxing match. I uh, watched that. It was what it was. And you, you have horrible. hands. You have a boxing background yeah. uh, from your days at, at the Y. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it so, was horrible. I tell you. It was, it was, it was uh, horrible. Yeah. You know, we're two guys. We're, we're two. We're, we're, we're on the same level. Yeah. It, it, it was uh, horrible. It's tough to work a match like that. You know, all you can, you can do your best and do your best to get through it. Here's what happened. Hard to tell a great story. Hard to tell a great story, man. You got to have somebody to tell a story, story with. with. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what happened: uh, McMahon took me off the road and threw me in a camp in Reno with Lou Duva, Tyro Biggs, Sprinks, Bax- uh, Braxton, Tyro Biggs, uh, Holyfield, uh, etc. And all of a sudden, six weeks, <gasps> how did I get here? Right. You know, I'm yeah. dying. And so now it comes time to get in the ring, and this is what they do to me. Because I'm waiting for a high sign. I right. told Vince, uh, go for it if he can. This is what they did to me. They had me make a fist, and then they taped up my fist. I heard about that. And then they put my fist in the glove. Right. Now, the commentating, Vince and this lady, and this lady had no experience at it. Zero. It was, it was really bad. So, yeah, anyway... So now I'm needing tea. Like, ah, this is what's going through my head. I'm going, I want to take this guy out. But if I take him out, what are the, what's Vince? What, what is right, Hollywood? What's God's what, Yeah, what's the con? Exactly. And, but if I can get him to do anything, hit me with an elbow, did anything. Right, right. I can justify it, right? And Vince isn't giving me no nothing. Right. Or anybody else. So I'm in the ring with this guy, and they wanted one. Sp- Go ahead, sir. No, no, I'm just okay. just to go into the, to that big of a match. Oh, second R- WrestleMania, and to really give me have, 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 have almost full creative, but no creative. Yes, you're you're boxed in. And now they they want uh, they want me to get at least knocked down by T. Right. Okay. So. I'm not sure. Maybe the second or third round. I can't remember. But, all right. And what I was going to do was T was going to left hook me, and I was going to go through the ropes onto the floor. Yep. So I'm getting around to that piece of business, and all of a sudden I realize not only do I have thumbless gloves on, my fists, I, I got... You can't hook the rope? I, I can't hook the rope. And I'm, I'm kind of looking, and I'm, I'm, I don't know, seven to ten feet. Yeah. And it's coming. Yeah. And here we go. And I just went for it. Well, he missed the left hook. Are you kidding me? You missed the punch. And I'm in flight. Okay. And I got back up in the next round. 
I, I took the stool and I threw it at him as hard as I could. Dude, you choked that thing across the ring with it's, force. It, that was, that was a shoot. Yeah. Okay. And it took it a, won, it oh, yeah. It took a yeah. hunk of meat out of him. And it was like, just, and again, we're taught, if I got a problem with somebody, figure it out in the locker room. Right. This is business. Right. That was beat into me. And you know what? I just, uh, I can't remember, I slammed him or something and get out of it. It's uh, one of my most shameful moments. Hey, man, you guys were on fire. You just shift gears, but you guys were on fire in the NWA. I mean, Madden yeah. Crockett. And things were on fire. We'll, we'll talk about the Valentine, the, the dog collar match next time around. But I want to cool. go back to where the business was uh, as far as the lifestyle and, 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 t- and selling tickets. Because you guys had lit it up down there. Uh, NWA was on fire. Yeah. You get the call. You, you go to WWF, the big show. Yeah. And, you know, obviously, uh, when I came up 10 years behind you, WWF was always the big leagues. I think sure. back in, I mean, you know, pretty much almost the same ball game. I mean, you know. Yeah, Charlotte you know, was big. Atlanta yeah. was, was like worldwide. Yeah. If you did. But, you know, it ended up being, you know, WWF's the big leagues. So then Absolutely. you go there and, you know, you, you, you uh, have Hulkamania running as wild as it's running. You're obviously mm-hmm. a gigantic part of that. So you guys are doing crazy business. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. like what, what was the mindset? Because you, you Orndorff, who's a fr- uh, friend of mine, my old hunting partner from my South him. Georgia days. I love him. I'm Oscar. Love too. <laughs> yeah. Oscar the Grouch. <laughs> he is a grouchy <laughs> guy in the morning. And Bob Ward. Yeah. Bob Ward's one of my favorite workers oh, of all time. Yeah. So did you, did you guys, you said you like to uh, travel or sleep by yourself in your own hotel rooms, but you guys had been traveling together. Constantly. How was that? I mean, three cool oh, cats yeah. that were on the same page going down the road together. I, I'll tell you, as wrong as this may sound, I'll tell you what we finally had to do. There was like uh, Bobby Orton, Morocco, Fuji. Yeah. We brought Bret Hart into it. Uh, myself and, oh, Adrian. uh you know, and a couple names that kind of, what we finally had to do, because there was so much trouble, is every night somebody would pick, the, uh, would uh, surrender their room. And in that room, anything you wanted. I think, but don't try to leave because we're all going to stop you. Right. And talk about some wrestling philosophy <laughs> and some, and whatever's going on, drinking a beer or whatever, you know, four, eight hours, the yeah. sun's coming up. <laughs> ah, let's have another one. Yeah, but if you tried to leave the room, we would all snatch you. Yeah. And if you caught that bad, that was our only way that we could figure out. And we were all trying to be dads, too. That, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. save our but yeah. Holy God. But you know the sessions then. Yeah. The knowledge. Right. Holy cow. It was, uh, uh, you can't get it anymore. But what, yeah, what a knowledge like that with, with, the, with, with all the roster, guys. The, the guys you just named. Oh. But but once you guys are getting lit up and everything's going on, you, you have a very dynamic personality. I can only imagine that <laughs> magnified maybe 100,000 times. I mean, <laughs> Along with some very salty cats in their own right with a Mr. Wonderful, uh, who Whoa. I spent lots of time with. Yeah. Uh, those ingredients in a room, Jesus Christ, had there been a camera rolling uh, for some reality. Holy uh, cow, baby, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> It, but, uh, so so once you got into a certain area, you're talking four to eight hours into the night, and you know I was always kind of one of those guys that loved to be around the guys for a while. Yeah. Then I kind of like to do what I call my power walk and do my own thing. And and you know I had a limiter. Yeah. You good. know, and I was mainly on the drinking side, but you know yeah. I, I could delve into uh, other areas. Yeah. And uh, and then I'm just speaking like it is, and we're you know, you. we're not going too crazy, but yeah. Uh, all, all you cats in the room, and so then you turned yeah. up. I mean, how did you turn down? Um, you know, I never did. I was the worst of them all. Right. And um, if we put the background that we talked about, and then all of a sudden I'm back in New York, yeah. no one's going to take it from me this time. Right. And, you know, like I had it out with Schultz. I had it out. I had it many hallways with Jimmy Schnooker. Well, what happened with you and Schultz? Schultz, uh, Schultz is a bully. Yeah. And, and he thinks he's a tough guy. And uh, he was, I tell you what, one day... We're in Poughkeepsie, and uh, in the hallway, uh, I hear this screaming, and Sh- Hogan's down on his tummy, and Schultz is riding him, and, you know, kind of cross-facing him and screaming, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? The, the truth of it is, like, th- because of the hallway, 
Hulk couldn't get his arms out, right? Right. And he's, and he's making a big scene. Right. Yeah. 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 He's got it, and he wants mm. to brag it. And so later on, like, I was doing a promo with Oscar and Schultz, and uh, I think like two minutes and 54 seconds. And so... Uh, wait, 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 saying Oscar, you mean Paul uh, I'm sorry, Paul Lohendorf. Yeah. And Dr. D. Uh, yeah. And Dr. D. And um, what Dr. D did was close, put his shoulder right next to Orndorff's to block me out completely. Ah. And they talked the entire interview with, and with about seven seconds left. I put one hand on Schultz, one hand on Orndorff, jumped over it and said, Roddy Piper, giant killer. <laughs> now what do you want to do? And Schultz said, can I speak to you? You betcha. And we went behind the curtain. And he says, you know, I don't appreciate it. I said, I don't really give a damn what you appreciate. Next time you try to block me like that, I'm going to tear you apart. What did he say? He just he looked at me to see if I was bluffing. You weren't bluffing? No, sir. Right. So he left you alone. Left he me went about his way. And he never ah. blocked you again. No, sir. But that's sometimes you got to stand your ground, and, and 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 many times, and it's man, it's, it's survival of the fittest. I mean, and you, yeah, you, yeah. You, you're either going to get your stuff in, or you're going to get smoked. That's right. So then you you also mentioned Snooker. You had some uh, oh, come man. to Jesus moments with Snooker in the hallway. Oh yeah. I just thought you know yeah. with the coconut thing, you've you've told that story a million times. Yeah. One of one of the most famous Piper pits of all time when you when you smash him in the head with the coconut. I get that that, that and, and business, you know. But I'm talking about. Here, in a hallway. What was the deal with you cats? I thought, man, oh, hey, man. you guys be like two peas in a pod <laughs> doing no, business. No. Why? No. Okay. Whoosh. Um, when uh, m- m- uh, Vince and Hogan first started their, their play in the WWF, they couldn't get anybody over Schnucka. He was so over. Right. So what they did is... They put Snooker in a cage match against uh, Morocco. And one of the most fantastic things I've ever seen, uh, Snooker slams Morocco and, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes into it, climbs to the top of the cage, to yes. the corner. He's got his little toes wrapped around it. Does a full squat. Then comes up with his hands like a swan, leaning back. Looks at the brother and goes... Soars and cameras are going off and boom, boom. Holy cow. And he didn't pin Rocco. Rocco kicked out and went out the door and that was finished. And Jimmy is a very wonderful, simple man. And then he realized what happened. Wow. At the same time, there was a, another situation in his private life, an allegation yeah. that was working on him, and I hit him with a coconut, yeah. and the brother is down, and he's mean. And uh, I would, uh, just like at Chicago, and the, I'm in the, in the uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm in the hallway, and I don't know where he came. Here comes Snooker just diving at me. But it, here's the truth. He was drinking in a little bit. And the truth is, like, when he dove at me, I just, like, I got him by the hair, and I just gently, it wasn't hard. I, I'm not. Yeah. It, it, it was like, it was like, hey, easy, bud. I just, please don't hurt me. But, like, it was, and then I beat him. No, no. Right, right. And one time in Oakland, man, um, <laughs> He's sitting next to me, and I'm wrestling him, and he goes, and he's crying hard. He goes, you know, brother, you're for yourself. You know, brother. Like, mm-hmm. a long time. So I went out in the ring. You know, it was Oakland, a lot of Samoans. And so there was this spot where Jimmy slammed me, and he said, stay. And he went up to the top. Now, I got his eyes locked. Right. I, I got to make a decision real quick here. Right. Because I heard that was snug to begin with. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And what I did was he came down, and I thought to myself, well, I'll try to save the nose. And I moved my face about three inches to the left. Match finished. I got back. He comes storming through that door. You moved, brother. The whole night. 
You moved, brother. You don't trust me. You howly. Da -da 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 -da. Howly is a word Hawaiians use for white people that's uh, like a. Right, right. You know. Derogatory. Derogatory. Right. Thank you. And uh, every night, I, I went through this every night with this guy. But I love him. I love him with all my heart. Um, but for the fans, it wasn't this jolly, jolly, you know, like we had some fun, but it was very competitive and it was life, life threatening. Without a doubt. You're listening to another classic episode of the Steve Austin Show, only on Podcast One. Hey, I want to tell you guys about Cushy Dreams. Cushy Dreams offers a full lineup of premium smokable CBD. They specialize in extraordinary CBD rich hemp flower, a.k.a. bud, in cans and pre-roll CBD joints. Enjoy all of the health benefits of CBD without getting high, under 0.3 THC. It's cannabis that ships directly to you, and it's legal in all 50 states. Join the men and women who are sick of vapes and gummies and want to smoke their CBD. Smoke your CBD. Looks like high-quality marijuana feels like high-quality marijuana, and tastes like high-quality marijuana. Independent lab tests to show compliance and purity are posted on their website. Grown in the USA, Cushy Dreams has CBD flour in and pre-rolls. They come in specific indica, sativa blends like Energy, Hustle, Relax, and Dream. My producer Sean says he likes to smoke the Relax strain before bed to get some shut-eye after editing the podcast. He says it tastes great. Exactly like high-quality weed, he would know. And, hey, it can be really helpful for these anxious times of 2020. Go to CushyDreams.com, K-U-S-H-Y. Get some high-quality CBD bud. At checkout, use promo code STEVE for 20% off every order. Cushy Dreams, smoke your CBD. You brought up a name a while ago. Oh, no, 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 first of all, before I move on, you know, I saw the dive, the famous dive, and, and Mick Foley was there. You yeah. Know, that's one of his stories. He was there. Ah. And I guess he hitchhiked a ride to get to the building. Uh, he was such a fan. But I, I forgot the finish of the match. He did not win the match with that splash. No, Morocco got oh. out the door. Wow. And that's how they got. And then I did the coconut. Right. Boom. And, yeah. Yeah, bro. And, then, down. and then the brother was doing G right. Gia's ops for me. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it just got uglier. And then there right. was just, see, there was a lot of clicks then. Yeah, clicks. But then all of a sudden, when, when, you, when you're riding that momentum, because there was times uh, I turned down some favors one time, very famous night in Atlanta. I just no-showed. I mean, what a what a. What a stupid, stupid thing to do. I and I was in a different world sure. back then, you know, sure. from Headspace. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest uh, regrets of my life, and I didn't handle my business like a man. But, uh, you know, when you when you get uh, backed against the wall sometimes or you feel like the company's trying to uh, derail you yeah. to slow you down, yeah. uh, you do have to be about yourself. And I'm all about business. And, and just in talking to you, I know you're all about the business, but yes, sir, and, and, and doing the job at hand. Uh, course, but it's like when hey, no sir for Mister T, uh, and you know I had the whole wrestling industry in my yeah, life. Yeah, I couldn't let him make a fool. You're out repping of us. the boys. Yes, and he's gone, and I as mad as everybody. Got, I can't do it, guys. Right, and this is why I was right. hot. You know, uh, yeah, and, and my my reasons didn't amount up to yours. But you mentioned a name uh, a while ago, who's one of my favorites of all time. And the match that you had with Adrian Adonis, going back to the eye pokes. Oh, yeah. I loved Adrian's work. Holy cow. I loved his work as a heel. Yes, he uh, was and great. you you were the baby face <laughs> at the time. And I, you know, I think y'all styles, y'all's chemistry to me, and this is just talking from a veteran's eyes and a fan's standpoint. Nice. Just said those guys had crazy chemistry. <laughs> to me, I'm just guessing you loved working with Adrian Adonis. He thought I was his brother. When we were in L.A., when we were 22 years old, we were called the 22s. I had to pull him off Mill Mascara, <laughs> stretching everybody. And he was an orphan. And um, So Adrian was a tough cat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he'd come up to me. You know, he looked horrible. Big boy. God bless him. Oh. He'd be in the gym. How do I look, Spikes? How do I look? Yeah. You, you, look you look great, Adi. Yeah. I mean, eat more tuna fish or anything you want. Right. But performing fool. Came from I think it was either Rochester or Buffalo. Um, his 
he was a came from a little bit of a mobbish background, right? Uh, and he loved me. He saved me a couple of times, but the one big time, we were in Poughkeepsie, and I was, you know, I was having issues, and yeah. I was hot, and he says, "Come here, come here." He says, "You know what's wrong with you?" He says, "You need to buy a house, put your kids in it." I'd never had a house. Wow. I, I didn't understand. You living in Portland at the time? No. Where? I was living in, across from the Woodbridge Shopping Center in New Jersey. And, like, I'd never had a home. Right. I didn't, I still don't understand. My children, I made sure that they were raised more. But I don't, I don't have a place I grew up. I don't have, uh, right. and so, I, I don't know. It, it's so what happened? It. So I bought a home. Right. I, and all of a sudden, one, you're what? Again? Again? Yeah. Four kids. Really, Giddy? Right. It's the water. I'm not holding that much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and that's thanks to Adrian. Uh, I, I, uh, he's the last funeral I went to. I did yeah. the eulogy at his funeral. And you know, his wife was there. And I always used to tell Adrian, I, I still do to the guy, but I say, hey, I love you. And a minute. And, you know, he'd say it back to me, and she'd go, like, what's wrong with you guys? Yeah. And then um, oof, I remember Adrian and I were talking one time, 80. <laughs> and we were just talking, and he says, yeah, the types, when I die, I want them to throw a party. I want them, you know, and I'm doing the eulogy, and and it comes to my mind, and I said it, and um, the casket was closed, and the family was draped off and, uh, from the lady. A sound of pain I can't mimic. Right. Oh. And uh, then she came over to me, and she said, now I know why you guys said that. Right. Um, and even when Adrian was doing the flower shop, he had the mini pearl hat with the price tag, big old dress on. He, he's the only guy that can go in drag, and it's just not in drag. Right. I don't know how to say yeah. that. He's, <laughs> and in WrestleMania three. He made sure that I got over. It's him that did it, not me. It's him that did it. But the uh, the, the the chemistry of that match, and then uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the, the time I think he was starting to get a little head of steam on you. Or his team, you, know, you, you, you hit him with the eye poke. I mean, it's like, and the way he sold it. Oh, it was like. He was great. It's one of my favorite matches of all time, and I think he takes a tremendous ass over tea kettle bucks. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. In the turnbuckle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he... <laughs> so, Brutus... Brutus was down by the ringside. I'm not sure why, how he got there, but here's like it was a hair versus hair match. Now, I have had... A, like, I had one with Guerrero, and I lost. So, I just had five more of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Nothing to lose. Just keep rolling with it. But I learned one thing. It's really hard to cut a man's hair when it's wet. Right. Okay. So as much as they think I was being a nice guy, I go, Brutus, you cut his hair. <laughs> and, he, and that's how he became Brutus a barber. A straight up shoot? Straight up shoot. I just, I know, you got it. Brutus a barber. That's exactly how he got Yeah, started. but he was already, already, already out there with the shears. He wasn't Brutus a barber to begin with. Yeah. No, you see, I can't remember why he came out. I can't. I, I like remember. I just watched his match the other day. But I remember a, he came out of the shears and he hit him on the top rope. Or no, it was Adrian that had the shears. Because then that, yeah, that, that's what he. We, not, we, we, we can't even talk it. about this on the air because people are going to watch YouTube and think how stupid we are. <laughs> you had the match. You lived it. I watched it. We don't even know what's going on. And we're talking yeah, in the present. I love it. What are, what the, this is the kind of BS that you get on the Steve Austin show. True, authentic, Ow. audio whoop-ass coming from, I'll say it, one of the greatest of all time, I sitting five feet too. away from you. I love you. You're listening to another classic episode of the Steve Austin Show, only on Podcast One. You own or rent your home. Sure you do. And I bet it can be hard work. You know what's easy? Bundling policies with GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle your homeowner's or renter's insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you already have so much to do around your home. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, and see how much you could save. It's GEICO easy. Visit GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com. All 
right, here we are, continuing my conversation with Rowdy Roddy Piper, the one and only Hot Rod. Roddy, I, I want to do something b- b- before we kind of bring this thing uh, on a uh, home. Yeah. We, we were talking about, you You uh, referred me to a video on YouTube. It's yeah. called Off the Top Rope. Thank you. Now, yeah. I want you to uh, talk about this just real quick because we're going to play. It's about a four-minute video. Yeah. And you said, hey, Steve, can we play this on the show? And I watched it, and it's such a special motivational video for people who are fighting cancer. Yes, sir. And so, you know, it lends itself to being a video but as far as audio goes, I thought we'd play a minute clip of it oh, and, then, and then let you explain to it. Or do you thank want to you. throw to it? Uh, I'll throw to it. Okay, go. Um, you know, uh, I'm a cancer survivor. And uh, Bruce Springsteen's band, the E Street Band, it's called Light of Day. And I performed in Niagara Falls and Toronto for Parkinson's and for cancer. And uh, I wrote this song called Step Off the Top Rope. I always have people... You know, how do you, how do you? And sometimes you don't know, but you just got to go. Like Babe Ruth was the biggest, one of the biggest home run hitters, but he struck out the most too. Right. And you got it in life. And so I uh, went with some of these musicians and then I performed it. And actually, uh, the, I don't know if you'll get to it, so I'll say the, you know, here's to Steve. You know, so like unbelievable musicians, right? And it comes to Rod's time to sing and they all stop. It's a cappella. Right? <laughs> really? Do you do that with Bruce, too? <laughs> anyway, uh, the things are, I've been up all night in this hotel room. I got my kids crying on the phone. That came from, I was teaching uh, my youngest daughter Silent Night on the piano, uh, but I was like 20,000 miles away. Right. Uh, then I said, Rick Rude, Mr. Perfect, and Big Boss, man, they're up in heaven cheering me on. Because in Miami, really quick, in Miami one time, Kerry Von Erich, uh, his right foot was amputated. Right, he still his motorcycle wrestled. crash. Yeah, and he didn't mind healing the room and taking his leg off. We went to a room one time, and for some reason, Kerry and I on the eighth floor went out and stood on the ledge. The window slammed shut. We're smoking a joint, looking, oh, rather. Uh, no, that's fine. Yeah, well, you were, you know, we're, I don't know. I can remember having to push back on the glass because the wind was so strong. Right. And, you know, you leave your door open for room service because you're right. too lazy. And here come Big Boss Man and Kurt, Mr. Perfect, down to have a beer. And they saw us and they pulled us in. I'm the only one alive. And uh, so that, you know, I've been up all night in this hotel room. I got my kids crying on the phone. Rick Rude and Mr. Perfect and Big Boss Man, they're up in heaven cheering me on. And uh, this song's for you folks. People say with cancer, you... I don't have a magic answer other than I don't know how to quit. And that's what this song was for you. And here it is. Got it, man. The uh, but the the message there. Yeah, you hey, got You know, you got to take a swing. Take a swing. You ain't doing nothing sitting on the sidelines. No shit. Yeah, no, get, no kidding. Get you, in the gotta, game. Yeah, you got to get in the game. And, and I know, like you, there's huge autographs lines for you, and I'm sure it's a saying like you get like three or four generations from the same family, and um. Ah, uh, they're watching you on TV, and they're bonding. It's not really us, but that, and there's, it's like, I think, a doctor delivering a baby. They're so precious, and they're so giving, and never cut off a line. You gotta say hi to them. Yeah, yeah, you gotta say hi yeah. to everybody. Yeah, that's old school. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, hey, man. So, and 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 wrapping this up, you uh, you beat cancer. Yes, sir. Wolf. That's you know, an ongoing thing. You keep going. My, my dad is a ten-year cancer survivor, God and every year man. he goes for his medical, his physical. Yeah. Uh, so. I, you know, I uh, wolf. <clears throat> I was it's wrestling fans saved my life again many times. It's mm. true, but in this one, it was called Cyber Sunday, and uh, Flair was half the world champions. And they needed to pick a partner, the fans did. And there was Rhodes, uh, myself, and Sergeant Slaughter. So I don't know whether it was worked or not, but, you know, I'm the only one dressed right. up, you know. <laughs> the other two guys ain't got wrestling boots. I'm figuring this one out, yeah. you know, <laughs> with my brilliance. And, uh, okay, boom, I'm the tag partners. We're off. Uh, we're in Glasgow, of all places, Scotland. And my back, my hips wouldn't work. And I couldn't figure it out. And uh, ended up going to the hospital, and there was a uh, piece of bone saw in the nerve. And while they were in there, uh, there's a lymph gland. And the guy saw it and got a biopsy, and I had lymphoma cancer. And so then... That they, was found during the hip surgery? Yeah, uh, not the hip, the oh, back surgery. The back surgery, okay. Hip was in 94. Okay, so, but but that was lucky you had the surgery. It might not have... It might have I wouldn't have known. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wouldn't have... I would have progressed. Yeah. Right. Big time. And... Uh, lucky fluke. Oh, uh, lucky fluke. And you know, my kids come to see me as, as a dad. Um, so all my kids come. I, I, I'll make up the room. I was in room 910. Right. And how am I going to tell them their dad's got cancer? They're just little... Yeah, the C word. Oh, Tough man. Word. Oh, man. So something happened with great-grandma, and she just happened to be in the same hospital, and I was buying time. I said, go down and say hi to great-grandma. And they went, and about a half an hour later, they come back to cry. She died in front of them. Mm. Oh, and they're man. crying and crying, and i got to say. You still got to give them the news. Yeah, and so, but you know what it did for me? It's like, hey, these they're dependent on you. Get up. And three days after... All that stuff, I was doing a movie called Sweet 16 on MTV. And I just kept rolling, and uh, I get checked when I can. <laughs> so right now, you're on Twitter, Roddy. R under slash Roddy under slash Piper. Yeah. And your website is RowdyRoddyPiper.com. And, <laughs> hey, you had the Rod Pod going back in the day. Are you going to get the pod going back Thanks. again? What I love you. I love you so much. See, this is, a, this is uh, for you folks listening, this is a, an example of a very accomplished gentleman uh, trying to help another fella out. And make no mistake about it, it's exactly what he's doing. It's like Muhammad Ali did it to me one time when I was a kid. And he's just doing it because... He's the pro that he is and the heart that he's got. I did a thing called Rod Pod uh, in the Lovitz Club on Universal. And after five weeks, I, I was in the top 20 in iTunes. But the guys in the Lovitz Club, they got mad at each other. And one guy took his equipment and left. And, you know, and there, huh? another successful venture. Right. You know, so I was going to try to get her kicked up again. And I, but I don't know what studio to go to and all that kind of stuff. So I, I'm going to seek around, you know, and get the Rod Pod going again and tell stories and also do future stuff, you know. Right. And I like helping people now. I like helping people. That guy asked me, well, how do you want to be remembered? I, um, I just uh, want to be remembered as a good dad. That'd be cool. Yeah, there's, and there's. I would like to say that same answer, but I can't. I mean, I would like to, but it's it's not going to happen. I still try to uh, go. Yeah, I still try to do what I can. But anyway, not to get all sappy, but you know, it is what it is. But to hear you say it's, that, uh, it's and, not sappy. It's like they don't understand that. That's all we got. Um, you know that that's that that that. But that is the thing. Family is all you got, man. If you can't, if you ain't, you know. And, and some people don't have families, but those yeah. that do, and the ones that are splintered, you know, <laughs> you, you have those come to Jesus meetings, and they yeah. work or they don't work. Yeah. And sometimes you can't force the issue. And so anyway, yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. my my many shortcomings. Uh, living the life that I did, and I got. So, so we're not going to sit there and turn this to a piss and moan session. I mm -hmm. had so much fun talking to you. 
uh, man, you're, you're right in uh, podcast. Uh, uh, you're right in uh, podcast uh, territory. I can probably point you in the right direction. <laughs> I love you. Hey, I love you. What about uh, you? Got a movie coming up, or it's a oh, documentary you're working on? Thanks, Steve. I love you so much. Okay, uh, whoa. I, I, it's they've been shooting for eight months all over the world, but documentary. I'm, yeah, but I'm I don't like it. Um, you, they show me where I'm not so I'm out of control a little bit. They, I, I got a real yeah, but you know what? Uh, it's an ugly side. I hate it. I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, but they, this is called. Uh, uh, it's called the behind the villain. Behind the villain, man. I saw a clip of it. I was like, I thought it was a movie, but it's a documentary. It's a documentary. Yeah, but you know what, Rod? Around. Man, if you you've you've gone this far into it. I would be very intrigued to see it because I uh, probably went down a parallel path in, in some degrees as you. Obviously, we're in the same business. Yeah. But uh, I was compelled. It, it, it was like I want Thank to you. see it. Thank so, you very much. Hey, and we all have our dark days, our demon days, our our days when we're the, 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 the greatest human beings on the planet. And <laughs> sometimes we hit those lows oh, as we both have. Yeah. And so I think many will watch this and gain strength from it. And obviously well, your, your, you. your uh, support for people with cancer uh, and, and people that people have drawn strength from you, you living vicariously through the strength that Rowdy Roddy Piper, you know, displayed through his wrestling career. And yeah, when you were heel and a baby face too, the guy that gave you everything he had every single time an obstacle was thrown at him in the ring or in the storyline, they live vicariously through that. I've had so many Stone Cold Steve Austin fans tell me that. So, hey man, I think Thank the you. highs and lows, uh, it, it's your story. I, w I would love to see it. So when are you thinking about re releasing this? Well, it's all shot. Um, I was going to release it around WrestleMania, which I'm think I'm going to be at. <laughs> okay, you think you're going to release a documentary at WrestleMania 30. Yeah. I've been hearing rumblings. We wanted to go about this before we got on the air. Uh, I've been seeing some noise about you and Hogan at WrestleMania 30. Can we talk about this? Should we talk about it? What's going oh, on? Yeah. Give me the 411. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's this. Um, you know, this is WrestleMania 30. Uh, I pinned Hogan once, and he's never pinned me. <laughs> you wanted a that. sleeper that night, one. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> um, it's, first of all, from a fan's perspective and from the WWE universe uh, and Vince, it never had closure. The business that would be done, uh, the interviews and stuff, would be coming from the heart. You could You could bring try to raise the bar uh, of the WWE entertainment machine in our sport uh, if they let us go toe-to-toe -to -toe and, and don't, uh, don't script us. Uh, then the fan will see really how it got started and why, and then they'll see the conclusion. They're asking, can I get in shape? I'm already in shape. Uh, they're asking Hogan, but there's a, there's a fear I guess of whether we can pull off the performance. Um, you can, yeah. I, I think you can. I think so too. I wouldn't. You, you, your style. You're a brawler. Yeah. And yeah. and so it's, Hogan's not going scientific. You know, it's no, a brawl. It's, it's a, a brawl. fight. Yeah. You don't need scientific wrestling. You, you no. Got, <laughs> all you need is to go. Get, yeah. I think you can do that, and I, I think. Know to watch the magic from a promo standpoint, but also from everything that the WWE is doing now with launching WWE Network and, and yeah. taking care of their future business. You know, some people have fallen off the, the WWE bandwagon. They have yes, sir. since you left, since I left. Hey, man, you're, you're, you're talking about you're one of the original cats from WrestleMania 1. Yeah. All of a sudden, 30 years later, here you are again. You're bringing history back to the present. A lot so of people cool. that fell off would jump back on to a storyline like this and say, God dang, I didn't know I was going to get a chance to see Hot Rod and, <laughs> and the, the Hulkster of all people go again. So, yeah. I, you know, I think it would be badass. I, I don't you. know if I'm going to be at 30 either. Oh, in any you got to be. You got to be. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, We're talking yeah. about you, and uh, sure. but I'd heard the rumblings through that. So it, it, I would love to see that match. Uh, and obviously you look, you look great sitting five feet across from me. <sighs> And, I'd put uh, my heart into it. I'd give them everything I got. And then, you know, what? I probably wouldn't ever get in the ring again. I would probably uh, walk away there. I don't have, you know, I've been fired many times. Um, but I've never been fired for 
other than speaking my mind, are doing yeah. the right thing. Not because of substances or I've never missed a gig right. other than, you know, the plane didn't make it. But what I'm getting, man, so so you need closure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I hear. It was really, really difficult. When WrestleMania two, when they started chanting my name, Hogan uh, went to McMahon and said, I'll just ride on his kilts. And mm -hmm. McMahon, uh, had, I heard the jungle, well, we'll take care of him. And uh, that's why I went and did They Live. Right. I did They Live so I could come back through the front door. Right. They were going to try to schnook me. Right. And, you know, I'd been trained by the old timers. And, uh, you know, it's a part, like I said, they just left us down in the, in the bowels of the garden. They didn't care. Right. And uh, I need closure for my life. Needs closure. Hey, man, we're going to wrap it up on this. You know um, what, Roddy, you look at these two pages here, and now I didn't even scratch the surface. And I didn't, <laughs> I looked at these pages one time because you referred to a piece of business that I was going to cover. So I, I would love to have you back anytime oh, you're in L.A. Just give yeah. me a yell because we covered so much, but we didn't cover nothing. <laughs> I'm Not, very honored. Yeah. You're a great guy, Steve. No, I, no, I no, appreciate like, you coming down here to be on the show. You know, you're a great guy, and you're, you're good for the business. I like the man that you are. No, no baloney. I like the man that you are. And I like, I, I like what you stand for. Um, because you know what? You're real. And I, uh, just for you guys out there that are trying to learn the business, uh, I say the same thing to all. Wrestle with your heart. Put your heart there. Be yourself. Everybody else is taken. Yeah. And Steve Austin, he gives you his heart. And he's from Texas, and I and I think you're wonderful, and I'm honored to be on here, and would be on any time with you. Nice, you, Molly. Thank you, man. Thank you for joining us for another classic episode of the Steve Austin Show. Please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, and tell your friends. For more Steve Austin Show, go to podcastone.com. That's podcastone.com. Support for this podcast comes from Pluto TV. Ready to get away from it all? Free yourself with Pluto TV. Stream hundreds of channels and thousands of movies and shows all for free. Yeah, free. No contracts, no subscriptions, no fees. Imagine 24-7 channels of Narcos, CSI, Star Trek, Survivor, and everything else from hit movies to binge-worthy TV shows, the latest news, live sports, comedy, and more. What are you waiting for? Download the free Pluto TV app for Android or iPhone and start watching now. Pluto TV. Drop in. Watch free.